Everybody, welcome to the uh, fall 2022 series. I'm Alan, this is Ginger, and yeah, we're going to get started. What do we have first? We have first announcements of the upcoming one. Mm -hmm. um, before we forget to announce. Uh, so today is going to be just a, a feature for, of all of the uh, spaces and work going on in here in our department, and then we have three excellent speakers coming for um, for the rest of the semester. Uh, you want to say anything about any of them? Um, October fourteenth is uh, Dean Hofstadter who studies children's geography uh, and teaches at UMBC. Um, November eleventh is Kaden Rosati who is with us right now um, <laughs> who studies media geographies. Uh, and teaches at Bowling Green and is a visiting us. and is visiting us for the semester. And then December 9th is Laura Salt, um, who's a migration scholar, um, focused on Latin America, and she is uh, has just joined the organization. Uh, and so the way that this uh, is going to work is we have um, uh, just really short amount of time for each of the faculty. I know it's hard for us, um, <laughs> believe me. Uh, but just very briefly, we're going to ask you to come up one by one and just briefly describe yourself and your work to uh, to our students, uh, just to refresh and also, let's be frank to each other, uh, to refresh everyone's <laughs> memory or give us an idea of what new stuff you're working on, and uh, particularly for our new graduate students to kind of orient you to um, what we actually look like uh, compared to our profile photos on the internet, which are probably 10 or 15 years old. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, again, please uh, keep it brief um, and put your photo on there just so that we know who's coming up next. Uh, but I don't have our order written down. So uh, as soon as you're done introducing yourself, uh, if you could then just hit the next uh, arrow and then we'll see who comes up next. What's our time? Like brief, like 30 brief. seconds. Or and low two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> If we use speak, if we all speak for five, we'll be here too long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so with uh, that, I think but, we'll, yeah, we'll go ahead and started. get started. So who's up first? I don't even remember. Oh. Are we in the spring. I do a lot of work on migration and uh, the probably the big news that will be interesting to you, I, Elizabeth Chaco and I have a grant on um, an NSF funded research on looking at uh, geographies and insecurity on the US Mexican border. Uh, we'll be running, we'll be actually hiring a couple undergraduates to work with us, but then we'll have some money to have someone who wanted to work on that topic with us in the summer. Uh, and otherwise, um, I also am the president of the American Geographical Society, and I there's a big conference in November, the Future of Food, Geography 2050, and uh, you're welcome to attend. Thank you very much. Who makes it me? Oh, no. But what am I looking for? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. okay, I'm Alan. Um, many of you know that I study the informal economy of waste in urban India. So, if any of you are interested in that, please come talk to me. Um, and my newest project relates to studying farm adult farmers and their relationship with pollinators uh, in the Western Himalayas. So that uh, new thing I'm doing. So, anybody who's interested in pollinators, also can talk to me. Uh, here's a couple of examples of the kind of research I do. So, if you're interested in your spare time and are looking for some delightful reading, this is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and that's it. Oh, and 
dramatically political ecology uh, and geography of South Asia right now. David. I am David Rain, I'm the department chair. Um, I put this photo in because I want to normalize perspiration. <laughs> this was taken about quite a while ago. Um, we were in Accra, um, Brian and I were grad students uh, walking around um, looking for neighborhood names and mapping street center lines and correcting imagery and doing all kinds of stuff for many hours every day. So it was a sweaty job. It was very fun. Um, so, and I have not been back to Ghana in a while, but I intend to go back. Um, my sort of up and coming project is a book on use of GIS and urban planning in, in Africa. Um, and I've got so far four collaborators, one in South Africa, a couple in Kenya, and uh, one in Nigeria, maybe one in Ghana coming up, um, looking at some simple or sort of intermediate level GIS tasks that um, someone like an urban planner or a neighborhood um, activist or whoever wants to um, do the work to determine something like uh, an urban heat index uh, for a particular city. Um, so um, I'm excited about this. I don't quite have a book contract because I don't have a proposal, which is in my court right now, um, but I'm uh, thinking that's going to be coming in the next couple of months. Um, last year when I stood up here, some of you weren't here, but I said I'm working on a novel about geography and I'm still working on it. It's in the <laughs> third draft, um, but it's it's fun. I still have these big eureka moments where I think, oh, I'm going to reorganize it this way. And then discovered that I had the same thought about two months before. <laughs> um, so I think I'm sort of rounding, getting around to, you know, something that makes sense and is going to be coherent. And I hope you all can read it sometime. So that's me. Yes, uh, I do not teach, but I have some uh, amazing projects that I'm working on. Uh, one of them, uh, many of you know and participated in Papacon, uh, digitizing informal roads in Eastern Siberia. Uh, that project is almost done, thanks to you. And uh, there are uh, some continuing projects. Uh, for example, with Scouts in Ireland, we are going to continue that work on informal roads in Mongolia. That's how we draw those resources and these the Indian communities in the mountains of Mongolia. Um, here we have a collaboration also with photographer, and uh, also we are working uh, together with indigenous communities, beauty and arts in art science, local and indigenous knowledge collaboration. And there are other projects that you also might be interested in participation because I, I do need some students graduate and undergraduate students to study urban green, blue, and white spaces, which is, um, you know, vegetation, um, lakes, uh, rivers, and snow and ice in Arctic cities. Um, and then I'm uh, interested in a collaboration on frozen commons, which is uh, about ice, snow, and permafrost, and how Arctic communities can use, share, and care about them. And also, we are cooperating now with Norwegian colleagues, and uh, it's a project called Urban Sustainability in Action, multidisciplinary approach from, through jointly organized research schools. And there are some opportunities for uh, participating in workshops and schools in Norway, uh, India, and Germany. So, with who I just to let you know. Listen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, there's an interesting connection there. I'm Melissa Keeley. Uh, my area is broadly urban sustainability, but um, specifically my work has focused on green infrastructure for the last 20 years before it was cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, green infrastructure, which I use the term just uh, to think about vegetative and bioengineered systems that contribute broadly to reducing the urban heat island effect and managing stormwater and other benefits in urban areas uh, is now the cool way to deal with climate change. 
Um, so um, specifically, I have uh, kind of two projects that perhaps students would be interested in. The first is that um, this summer I um, started a long-term project on uh, bioswales or bioretention sites in DC. Um, and it would be really easy for a grad student to kind of hook on to that long-term project um, and answer either physical questions about how they're performing or like social, social science questions about how they're received by the communities they're in. Um, and similarly, the other uh, kind of avenue of work I'm working on is thinking about how green infrastructure can be used uh, in, in shrinking cities, close to my heart, uh, in uh, like Ohio, in the Great Lakes region, and uh, kind of thinking about how we use vacant land, uh, how that land contributes to, so Detroit in the top right, how it contributes to cities like uh, New, Orleans, New Orleans in the lower corner, and kind of how that, we think about that related to equity and um, kind of the kind of social sustainability issues as well uh, in Cleveland. So thank you very much. Next up is Mike. <laughs> so the first thing you need to know about me is I usually don't read the first like sentence or two of a paragraph in an email. So I missed the part about giving uh, photos. Uh, <laughs> unless it's bullet pointed, I always read bullet points. Where so, to the wise. Um, <laughs> so I teach uh, programming and GIS. Um, I, I guess I am sort of a um, spatial modeler, spatial forecaster. Um, I, my main projects are focusing on wildfire forecasting in California. I work with the state to do their sort of forecasting models in order to do, you know, basically predicting risk to housing um, and to help with their sort of carbon markets um, through avoided uh, wildfire emissions. Um, I also am going to be taking a uh, sort of short-term position at the Department of Treasury, oddly enough, because they are now uh, responsible for looking at systematic risks to the financial system due to climate change. And they have no idea how to deal with spatial data. And that's that's great because apparently they're taking like transparencies of maps and just like overlaying them <laughs> on each other. So it's going to be a long, uh, arduous journey with them. Um, but yeah, if anybody's interested in wildfire, spatial modeling, forecasting, all that kind of stuff, uh, that's very much my realm. Um, and And certainly, you should all take programming. Anybody can program. Um, you know, people that are nervous about programming, uh, the first thing to know is if you're, uh, the best determinant of whether you're gonna be a good programmer or not is whether you can learn languages. And many of us, you know, speak a language or have learned another language. So uh, you don't have to be great at math. You just have to be willing to butt your head up against a computer for hours at a time. Um, yeah, and that's it. Sell it, sell yes. it, yeah. Hey. Break. Yep. I just heard that one of our recent graduates is getting paid a full-time job while doing 20 hours a week. Uh, that's my dream for you all, right? <laughs> Let the computer do the hard work. My, what is CRS? Oh, uh, coordinate references. <laughs> <laughs> that's from my uh, online budget. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mona Atia. I am um, in this department and I direct the Institute for Middle East Studies. I'm a critical human geographer. I focus on urban development and um, critical development studies, which is really looking at development as a project and why it hasn't worked very well uh, over the past like 50 to 70 years uh, since it, it, uh, its inception. So I'm really interested in breaking down for example, the sustainable development goals. And I focus on goal number one, which is to reduce poverty, extreme poverty uh, by 2030. We are not going to do that. But uh, <laughs> poverty mapping is supposed to be a tool in that, uh, in that uh, area, an important tool um, for targeting interventions at the poorest of the poor. So I'm interested in that. That's what I've been spending the past several years researching um, in Morocco and France. And um, so uh, as my you know, bio says, I'm really interested in anything to do with spatial dimensions of marginalization and thinking about uh, 
the impact of development interventions on people themselves, on communities. And, um, and so I've also done some participatory mapping um, with different communities. I'm interested in both rural and urban issues and the relationship between them. And I teach ge geographical perspectives on the Middle East, um, but I won't be offering it until, I'm going on sabbatical in January, so I won't be offering it until the next year. <laughs> but if you're interested in anything to do with the Middle East, you also are welcome to talk to me. Um, one more thing, uh, we just uh, got a big grant from the Department of Education, um, Title VI, to support outreach. Uh, and I am very excited to say that the, this is in the Institute for Middle East Studies. The focus is geography. Uh, so, yes, uh, so bringing Middle East Studies and geography together and, and um, trying to produce both multimedia outputs and um, educational materials for K through 14 educators, K through 16 actually. Um, so if you're interested in doing anything like that, uh, come talk to me as well. Thanks. I'm not lost, I'm the only one. <laughs> so my name is Maria Rosenham Smith and uh, I'm a social scientist and as you can see on this photo I'm the Arctic person so I'm really really uh, passionate about our cold regions and I'm the part of the team uh, called uh, the team um, the Arctic team here at the department um, so we have now our cold uh, regions lab at the church building and uh, if, um, I mean, uh, the, uh, the projects that I'm focusing on are mainly um, two projects right now. Um, one, they are related to gender issues in the Arctic that are very, very important and often overlooked, especially uh, given uh, what happened during pandemic time. Uh, so both of them are NSF-sponsored projects, and I'm PI on that project. And uh, so one of them is about gender empowerment in the Arctic regions, and we have partners across all the Arctic uh, jurisdictions. And uh, the second one is uh, about uh, COVID-19 impacts, gender impacts in the Arctic. And here we have a special focus on women, those women who live in uh, rural, remote, indigenous communities uh, in the Arctic. I just came up from Iceland, where we have our I signed the partners and I did my field work research for three weeks. So if you would like to hear more about our findings, and again, we're traveling a lot, we do our field work, and we're really, really interested and passionate about what is going in that such an important remote um, region of our planet. Uh, also, uh, everything that comes to urban social sustainability in the Arctic, Arctic governance, uh, uh, Russian Arctic regions, or it used to be my, uh, topic of expertise, we don't know what to expect because if you really want to be an expert, you really have to go into do uh, field work from time to time there. Now, as you know, that global traveling might be uh, not that easy and the, these regions might be not very um, accessible for us. And also youth migration and out migration from those regions. It's actually a very, very important topic and also indigenous urbanization and everything about uh, indigenous institutions and political representation and mechanisms of uh, cultural uh, resilience and food security, indigenous food securities and their traditions. That's also something that will work together with indigenous communities and we believe we can learn a lot about sustainability and resilience and environmental approach from these communities. And we will be happy to share. And, the, and again, mention one again, once again, that youth, I really believe in young generations, so we work a lot with youth. Um, and we want to make sure that in our research and our studies, also youth voices are very well presented. So if you're interested, you're welcome to, uh, to come to our um, cold regions lab in the church building. And also as a part of promotional materials, <laughs> Yes, we know. We are told about our, this our website. Just <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, just go by and we have more there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I can see a 
I'm, I'm Koli Shiklamanov. I mean, I'm here, but I'm not actually here because I'm on sabbatical. Uh, so I'm not going to teach anything this year. Uh, and next year, who knows, right? So I think it's yet, yet to be decided. Right, so but generally, I'm teaching intro, uh, physical physical geography courses and digital courses uh, on, uh, uh, on the Arctic. And I'm kind of a bit heavily involved in Arctic research. And uh, you know my main specialty is so used to be at least kind of hardcore physical geography, as you can see here. But now I'm kind of a, you know doing a little bit more interdisciplinary stuff involved in all those activities. Maria and Bia was mentioning, and then Dima and Kelsey and all the other sort of Arctic uh, Arctic people. And uh, since all my sabbatical travels were ruined by what's happening in Russia, you know these days are. So I'll be around. <laughs> and actually, uh, what I'm going to focus on in my sabbatical is actually the same uh, kind of you know, our research program because it was very heavily Arctic research for obvious reasons, but very, very heavily involved uh, some Russian kind of field activities and stuff. And it's my strong belief that it's going to be much, much worse before it gets anything better. So, uh, I'm going to kind of rethink what we are doing here. Well, what at least what I'm doing here is just kind of trying to find kind of the new uh, regional areas and try to wiggle myself into it because this is getting kind of hard. So, if anybody has any suggestions, <laughs> you are more than welcome. So, it's cold in Mars. <laughs> well, it's so far. Yeah, I never can actually survive that Kelsey. 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 Well, I can I mean Kelsey is part of our Arctic team, right? So and she's involved in all those projects with Vera, Miss Me, Miss Dima, and have a couple of things of her own related to urban sustainability and uh, some other stuff. And she actually teaches me some of my courses. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what she looks like. As much as I the other see on a single slide for me. I'm a slight, um, a little slow typer, I would say. I usually don't put a lot of pictures from the old text. So yeah, I'm Dima Strenetsky. That's me a couple of weeks ago, beautiful summer day in Utkiakvik, which is former borough, Alaska, where we was stuck for an extra few days. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful day. So yeah, I am going to teach some of the classes I'm back maybe next week. Okay, uh, I'm generally more on sort of this part of the spectrum, so I can ice. There is a little air in it, and there is a little dirt. Okay, so when it's frozen, it's beautiful. And it goes, it basically shrinks in size and takes a couple of collapse. Right, so it's happening a lot in many regions in the Arctic and also in Alpine, high altitude environments, um, where really impacts of climate change are maybe two, three times faster than globally. And those changes transform natural ecosystems, so they affect everything that moves, works, lives on it, right? So primarily, I'm interested in specifically impacts on infrastructure, so how climatic change affects winter roads operations, permafrost, everything that builds on it, roads, pipelines, and so on. We do a lot of field work, and we bring students to Alaska, as you can see, those are all GW. Students in Russia, Polar Urals, Alaska. Um, and it's hard to get there. It is hard. <laughs> now it's even harder for some regions, right? But those are a few means of transportation that we employ, which is pretty much everything, right? So we apply small planes, helicopters, trains, boats. Sometimes things happen, and this is what is it Fixing the rotor blade. Pilot is short, but Professor Shiklamanov is tall. And during the American Atlantic, Professor Shiklamanov, there's a letter from a duct tape 
fix in the royal blade to speak in oil and emergency in landing in our small Alaska. So we do have a lot of new things going on. We bring students, and sometimes, as you experience, some of them come back. So I guess I'm more important <laughs> than taking them. Uh, I'm teaching geography of Russia. Who's taking geography of Russia? Yeah. All right, good. So I'm back. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have us at some point. So. Um, but also, I'm teaching Arctic systems. I think that's going to be offered in the spring, probably, right? Uh, I teach climate change. And I think everything else is doing really undergraduate. Okay. So, welcome, new grad students. I'm very excited to meet you all. Thanks. My name is Moses. This is how I look with a mask. <laughs> um, those features, I guess, are not so clear. You can tell they were taken uh, years ago, especially the first one, <laughs> when I was still very young. Um, yeah, so let me take you away from the ICE conversation. <laughs> okay. I'm a critical geographer. I'm interested in everything that's wrong with our food system. Um, some of you are uh, reading my um, agriculture and sustainable food systems class. I also teach uh, society and environment and the geography of Africa. In terms of research, um, I've been fortunate to look at the new green revolution um, from a critical lens, but also agroecology in Africa. And these are contrasting approaches. So that's why I said I'm quite fortunate. And I'm looking to leverage these uh, insights from the African context into indigenous communities in the United States. We all know food insecurity is a major issue. And my aim is to generate contextually relevant farming techniques that some of these communities that are cultivating um, their own food, I know some are foraging and other means of uh, getting food to be able to improve agricultural systems. Well, I'm also interested in food loss. Um, I've had conversations with some of our team members, colleagues already, uh, but also looking to partner with other colleagues in Africa to generate um, locally relevant technologies um, for food loss. Why locally relevant? Um, we've come to realize uh, modern technologies sometimes are expensive and um, small the farmers may not also identify with these technologies really well. So I thought if we have some techniques that are really context specific and relevant, that might help address the issue of food loss. So if you are interested in any of these topics or maybe anything about food, you can talk to me. Um, during office hours or you can just email and we'll be at the time, thanks. Yeah. Never read the email. <laughs> oh, they took that picture off the, the website. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, so my name is Ryan Aikstrom. Um, I most of my research right now uh, is moving to uh, the machine learning and artificial intelligence domain. Uh, most of it right now is working on mapping deprived areas in different cities around the world. Uh, coming up with technologies to do that. I'm supposed to be presenting in Cyprus tomorrow or Wednesday, <laughs> but I'm not going to make it. Uh, we can put the presentation out today, but it looks pretty good. We got some good results. Um, and we just put in for some gates funding. Hopefully we get it uh, moving forward and we'll start with a few cities and possibly expand to a lot of the world. That is the goal. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. That's one project. The other project I worked on is Youth Mappers. Um, and so Youth Mappers started at GW. A lot of us used to work on it. It's expanded all over the world. There's over 300 universities around the world now that are part of it. Um, we have one year left on the, the grant. We'll probably get more. 
Uh, it's a really cool project and just released a really cool documentary. If you have a chance on the Facebook page, check it out. You can see what we're doing. Uh, and I want to kind of link what I'm doing with poverty mapping and all the things in youth mappers. Uh, that's kind of the dream. I'm doing this. I'm also linked and I run the data science program. So if you're interested in the technology side of geography and the technical stuff, that's what I'm doing and that's where I'm going. So talk to me about that. Uh, a few of the students are, you know, taking data science courses as well. So lots of stuff doing that. And yeah, pictures ridiculous. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Jim Farrington. Uh, most of my work is in some way looking at ways to understand land degradation. Primarily, I work in rangeland systems, but I look at other places as well, kind of trying to understand how the choices that we as humans make about how we manage land impacts um, the surface of the earth at kind of larger extents. And then once those changes take place, kind of how do we modify our behavior and kind of come together to decide how we're going to manage it going forward and design useful policies. And so my work kind of falls into two categories. Um, there's one arm of particularly some of the stuff that uh, grad students here have worked with me on is um, thinking about new ways we can map and model land cover change in arid rangelands because a lot of the data that currently exists for those kinds of arid systems where I work, this is um, in a uh, picture of some work in Mongolia, where a lot of my work is going on right now. A lot of that is really not useful because basically a lot of the entire country of Mongolia is like in two categories of like grassland or barren, which like if you're actually there and working on the ground, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And, uh, and then beyond that, um, another sort of arm of my work is using some of those data and figuring out how we can put those together with social data, data on people and their decision making, and biophysical data like counting plants. Actually, this is my happy place right here. <laughs> That's what I really want to be doing all the time. Uh, and figuring out how we can bring those really um, different data types together um, with models so that we can understand the systems as systems. Uh, which are actually uh, have behavior uh, in and of themselves that is helpful for us to try to understand and harness and, and think about how it might, um, how individual changes might move things forward. Uh, so, yeah, so basically my background is in plant ecology, and this is what I wish I was doing all the time. But the thing is, if you want to know what's going on with plants, you kind of need to know what's going on with the people, right? Uh, and so, in order to do that, we have to bring in a lot of different other kinds of data. And uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Somebody left. Oh, Hi, everybody. My name is Scott O'Dell. I'm a new visiting assistant professor in the department. Thank you. And I'm thrilled to be here. I can tell even just from this meeting, this is a very fun group of people. There's a lot of energy here, and I'm liking that. Um, my research focuses on the themes of mining and climate change, especially in vulnerable communities of Latin America. So to give you an example of how uh, I apply that, we just finished a conference today. It's been a very busy few days. Uh, looking at how the clean energy transition will affect demand for mining and in turn, what that will do to uh, society, the environment. This increase in extraction of metals instead of, say, oil and coal, uh, what this will do to uh, the environment and society. I look at that specifically in my research in conflict over water in mining communities in Chile. I have a new grant to look at this as it relates to desalination being used by the mining industry uh, as an adaptive mechanism to climate change, uh, and then also how glaciers and mining are intersecting in communities that depend on bulk. Um, I have listed the classes that I teach there. I am coming here from uh, MIT, from the Environmental Solutions Initiative there, which is where I, I also do my research uh, in this conference that I mentioned today. So thrilled to be here and to meet all of you. Thanks. <laughs>
Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Um, I'm the uh, manager of the spatial analysis lab, and uh, all the new grad students I haven't had a chance to meet you guys yet, but welcome. And I'm hoping to echo Scott's comments about how sort of warm this department is. I hope you realize now that you made a good choice because you'll get to know all of us, you'll have a good time, and you'll also learn a bunch and hopefully be very employable when you graduate. Um, so the main hat I wear, uh, managing the spatial analysis lab and for the last 13 months, often weekly arguing with uh, IT about the infrastructure that we have or don't have and should have, um, which continues. So when I'm not wearing that hat, I'm sort of setting emails and uh, um, sort of working with students on different things. I've had the opportunity to work with uh, various professors on cartographic projects and GIS projects. My background in, in I should have said at the beginning, is in cartography and GIS. And um, I'm trying to think of an interesting story, uh, something I've done with my work. Um, while I think about that, uh, I do get to teach two classes. Uh, in the fall, I teach an introduction to cartography and GIS. And then in the spring, I teach my open source geospatial solutions for, no, open source GIS. That's the short name. <laughs> it has a longer name, open source solutions for geospatial uh, project management. That's what it's called. Um, so my interest is uh, primarily where geospatial technologies can be applied to the humanitarian disaster relief, disaster response sector. So that class has a humanitarian slant, um, which reminds me of the uh, something I can tell you about where my experience has taken me. In 2015, there was a couple of earthquakes in Nepal, and there was obviously a large uh, worldwide humanitarian response to that. I was lucky enough to be deployed with the shelter cluster. Um, for about five weeks working in uh, out of Kathmandu. And I was hired as a information manager to work with that group to help with the um, sort of uh, yeah. delivery of all their uh, household goods and, and sort of shelter type needs. Um, if you're not aware, when a big disaster happens, the shelter cluster sort of is, uh, is, is activated. And there are, I think there's like 13 clusters. Shelter is one, there's one for logistics, one for education water sanitation and health there was another one. So different agencies take these on. And I was working with the um, International Red Cross, uh, Red Crescent Society or Federation. Um, so they take over the shelter cluster. And so anyway, I got to work with a really cool bunch of people in Kathmandu. And it's because I have these sort of hard skills with working with the tentacle and working with data and GIS that I was able to do, do that. So these skills you're doing GIS um, and taking like Mike's class and getting very technical, Chances you get employed are very, very good. Um, and you get you get to do that work in really kind of cool places. And um, yeah, and I'm around if anybody needs. And I hope uh, I'd say I look forward to meeting all you guys um, coming up. So maybe a little more than that. But uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, guys. Well, hi, everybody, um, especially second year grad students. I didn't really have a chance to meet you because last year I was on sabbatical. Uh, I'm back now. They pulled me back in. Um, my name is Lisa Benton Short, and um, that's actually me doing research. I'm actually interviewing somebody on Zoom. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm an urban geographer, uh, mostly looking at US cities and some of the contemporary challenges that a lot of US cities face. Um, Everything from restricting public space use or in, increasing public space use, which is actually kind of something we saw coming out of the pandemic, is uh, kind of valuing our public spaces and our parks a little bit more. Um, the role of monuments and memorials has been something I've looked at for a long time. Um, and of course, um, really interested in the idea that monuments and memorials shift meaning over time. They're symbolic spaces. Um, and so there's been some really interesting work on you know, taking down Confederate monuments, for example, and why that's an important process and conversation to have. More recently, I've been looking at urban sustainability a lot, and Melissa and I oftentimes do work together on urban sustainability issues, and that's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we teach a class called Sustainable City together. Um, and then um, even more recently, looking at redevelopment and gentrification in cities, in particular in DC, which is a hotbed of gentrification and redevelopment. And in fact, um, I used to uh, live right here in Navy Yard. How many of you guys have been to Navy Yard? Okay. Uh, so you know that it's a very hot um, and up and coming still uh, neighborhood. Um, the area that I lived in Navy, Navy Yard used to be 
um, one of DC's pioneer projects on mixed income housing. Um, and so I lived um, in and around people who were also living in DC public housing and workforce housing. Um, I'm not sure it's working, which is a really sad thing to have to admit because it's oftentimes touted as a solution to segregation and inequality. And I'm just not sure it's working anymore. So we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. If that's something you're interested in, maybe exploring a little bit. Um, so anything having to do with cities and, and DC in particular, I um, would love to get some uh, more research going. And sometimes I get confused for Marie. So if Marie could come back up. <laughs> I'm shorter. She's shorter. Okay. <laughs> Look a little bit like over different people. We are correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly more aggressive. Both days are almost over. So that's like one of the few pictures of me you've ever seen a suit that's not like a court appearance or um, <laughs> you and around heaven forbid. So uh, I'm also a, a critical human geographer. Um, I teach uh, geographic thought to the new grad students. Um, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Um, uh, I also teach cultural geography, economic, political, and um, among other things. Um, so my research projects are kind of spread out across a few different things. Um, so uh, generally kind of examining cultural and economic geographies. Some of that has to do with colonial projects and development um, in Canada, particularly working with uh, First Nations communities in Nova Scotia, um, and also some work in, uh, in Richard's homeland, where Richard, in Newfoundland, <laughs> uh, forgotten Newfoundland. Um, and uh, I'm also working on a research project that has to do with um, urban governance and kind of the growth of the gig economy and the changing nature of cities. Um, and we have a book coming out about that next year, hopefully sometime. We just finished that. Um, hopefully, I don't get anything back saying we have to write more. Um, and so that's it. I'm interested in um, anything to do with cultural, economic, and political geography more broadly. Um, and I'm also fascinated by kind of the kind of changing nature of geographic knowledge. So if you ever want to talk about like conspiracy theories or <laughs> particularly the flat earth, um, I would love to chat. So, uh, so thank you. Hi, I'm Clayton Rosati. Um, I am a geographer, but I work in a school of media and communication at Bowling Green State University, and I'm currently on sabbatical. So I want to say thanks to the Department of Geography here, and especially to David, for uh, for giving me a research affiliation and giving me a such a warm and uh, and fun seeming uh, home <laughs> uh, for the for the fall. Um, my, my research in, uh, in a really broad stroke has to do with, uh, with critical geographies of uh, cultural production and popular culture, um, and I'm interested in the infrastructure and labor of media production and pop culture production. Um, so I have a book that I have to finish by January, um, which is one of the things I'm doing here um, on uh, MTV and the gentrification of Times Square called Times Square's Last Peep Show. Mm. And I have a uh, funny story related to that, which we'll say later. And then <laughs> I have another project that I'm hoping to start in Virginia, um, studying the electricians and electrician un electricians union that builds the internet um, and data centers and stuff in Northern Virginia. And I have a lot of interest in figuring out how some, some way to map um, the change in land usage and environmental um, use uh, or environmental change and effects in Northern Virginia from like 1990 to 2020 or something like that. So, and I have no idea how to do that. So I'm interested in, in hearing some advice. So thank you again for, for having me. And uh, Emma, it's been great meeting and hearing from you all. Oh, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Hey, well.
Now let's go get drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing actually. Well, yeah, just for those who are not as are new oh. to the day. So we did once a month. Uh, you saw the schedule coming up. And then uh, at the culmination of our speaker series, we always reconvene in the Dark Department kitchen for a little happy hour get together. Everyone is welcome to join us. You do. too. Upstairs and then downstairs again. <laughs> Bye, everybody online. <laughs>